Today's monitoring committee meeting, councillors, community board members, council officers, members of the public, uh, media, welcome along. Uh, just a quick brief message about your cell phones, please. Either put them on the silent or turn them off. Uh, we have a policy here of a $50 donation to a charity of your choice, should your cell phone ring. Before we uh, get into the meeting proper, as uh, now seems to be the standard procedure, we have a health and safety message. If the fire alarm sounds or we advise to evacuate the building, please follow the instructions of council staff. Your primary exit is through the main doors. Move quickly without running. Turn right and move up the Ardott Street and await further instructions. Staff will guide you to an alternate exit. Please remain outside the building until all clear is given. In the event of an earthquake or non-fire alarm emergency, please remain where you are until staff give you further instructions. Pretty simple. Well, again, welcome along. Um, we have an apology from Councillor Howie Tamati. Would someone like to move that apology? Second. Second. No further apologies. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. It is carried. Members of Monitoring Committee, are there any conflicts of interest that uh, will arise in the uh, agenda tonight? Urinui. Urinui. Councillor. On the Urinui Seawall, A2. Thank you very much. Tonight we have one public forum and uh, welcome back Lance, Mr Lance Girling Butcher. Um, Lance is here to uh, talk to us about item A1. So Lance, would you like to come up? I did notice that uh, when you walked in the room, Yogi made an immediate <laughs> beeline for the table here and tried <laughs> to sit under it. <laughs> he wants to come back. <laughs> <laughs> welcome along Lance and Ellie. Want him by the lectern, if he's going Whatever's to comfortable for you, Lance, the lectern is there. Stop me falling over. <laughs> Turn around to your left. Thanks, Dan. Well, welcome, Lance. Yeah, yeah I am. Uh, uh, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Um, no guess about why I'm here tonight. Uh, I want to talk about uh, A1 on your agenda. And I'm wearing three hats tonight. I'm a member of your Access Issues Working Party, uh, the Nation Centre, and I'm Chairman of Positive Ageing. And uh, I just wanted to come along tonight to, to emphasise the importance of this report from the CCS and commend CCS for making the suggestion and Steve Taylor, who I believe is a former employee of this council, for the way in which he's carried out the job. It's pretty obvious when you read it um, that it has several key benefits which are noted in the recommendation that you're going to vote on later. Um, he's helped to redefine or define some of the parameters of parks for the disabled and crossings and uh, pram crossings, um, pedestrian crossings and pram crossings and these sorts of items. Um, you know, accessibility isn't always about major improvements and as Steve has said in his 91 recommendations, there's just a lot of little things that disrupt life in different ways for different people. Um, I would love beside those recommendations to see this kind of research and survey um, throughout the city. I, I personally thought that Fitzroy was a pretty accessible part of town. I'm scared to go there now having read it, but, uh, <laughs> but um, he's, uh, he's highlighted a lot of things in, in, a, in a, it's not so old part of the city and if you go back to you know the 150 years ago sections obviously there'd be a lot more to find there. So I, I would love to see this become a strategy that, that this council adopts, that it looks at different sections of the city in a rotation. Out of it, I'm delighted that, that some of these, or a lot of these things are going to be followed up. Disability, you know, is, is a difficult thing to define and, and for people to understand. Basically, it means that, that you you're assisting people who are handicapped in a physical, sensory or mental way from performing as most people in the population do. And if you take that definition to its logical conclusion, 
as I have done on a couple of, late, of occasions lately, therefore starting something of a riot, you could say that all women are disabled. They're smaller and weaker than men. <coughs> I'm sorry, ladies, but I'm going to explain that. You know, it, while it did start these near rights, it was a fact that less than a hundred years ago, that's exactly how society looked on women. It's not, it's not the handicaps that people have, it's society's attitudes that dictate disability. In those days, women were not allowed to control their own finances. They were basically the pawns of their husbands or fathers, and they couldn't even run businesses. Since then they have battled their way, not quite to equality yet, I don't think we can say we've got that, but they certainly fulfil a far more significant role in society and, 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 and can achieve some anyway, get through the glass ceiling, we're getting examples all around the world these days. So if you compare that with the handicapped, we still have a hell of a long way to go to get that kind of equality. To, to, we need a bit of help doing it, and this report indicates ways that that can be achieved. So I'd just like you to, I, the one thing I didn't want to happen was that it got filed, it got a tick in a flick, and it, because it's far too important to, um, to we who have a little bit more difficulty getting around than most of you, in spite of my dog, um, and, and keep that in mind. And thank you for, for listening, and um, all the best for the future, the elections, and um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to, is the mayor here? He is. He is, well, yeah. I'd like to honor his worship. And there's a couple of old mayors, ex-mayors here, I better honor them too, um, <laughs> before I leave. Thank you very much. Yeah, You're welcome, yeah, Lance. You. <laughs> um, this was a, uh, a public forum, so uh, we're not gonna have any questions, Lance. But thank you very much, Lance. Then we move into a deputation, and we have a deputation Davy Calder and uh, Mr Calder is going to uh, refer to the uh, waste management. Mr Calder, welcome along. Mr Chairman, my submission today is pretty much a load of rubbish. <laughs> I came to this lovely cultured town from the Coromandel where garbage and recycling are collected weekly by one truck even on a rural road. Here I came to admire the fantastic rugby skills of the crew passing the recycling up to the top of the truck, but I thought our collection system was a bit primitive. So I welcomed the council finally about 10 years after the TCDC introducing a bin system and special bags to encourage recycling and waste minimisation. Assuming this committee is monitoring it, I know you'll have worked out how to retro install a little clip so the legendary wind doesn't open the yellow lids which act like sails and flip the bin and its contents over. But my concern is the carbon footprint of the scheme and its costs will certainly interest this committee. So here's the story of a little street in Upper Vogel Town which used to be visited by a truck or oh, lunchtime on a Wednesday every night and a couple of young chaps always present waited if you ran out with your bag, and they went up Carrington and nudged into side streets on the way back. Well, let's see how this has changed. In my little street, which is pictured, bright and early, screaming down this no exit road, a truck showing no ID beyond I love rubbish, perhaps it's green waste, visits a single house and exits at speed. Fortunately, the kids on bikes are at school 40 weeks out of 52. Tuesday's truck stopped coming this, the week before I began this research. On Wednesday, waste management pulls into the street and serves my neighbour, if a bin is there, and one, perhaps two, in the cul-de-sac at the end of the street there before exiting at speed. Yeah. Um, and so to rubbish day itself. Thursday, 8 a.m. or 7 if you're unlucky, please correct me later, the first council truck comes for the pink bags. <coughs> that yellow one, I believe, must be the council one, but as I say, please correct me. There's one driver lifter, or left-hand drive, seems understaffed to me, but you'll have looked at the health and safety. And then a second yellow truck comes at lunchtime. Oh, that's the first one turning around. The second one there, with the grabber arm, comes for blue or yellow lids, as the case may be. 
and compare this with the TCDC, a single truck, cardboard behind the cab, a boy got out and sorted the coloured glass in bins there and the actual rubbish went in the back. Modest use of diesel. So this truck is the fourth truck of the week. On Friday, like the creator, the council rests, at least in Vogeltown. <coughs> so we have trucks three days a week. But yesterday, a little lost perhaps, this fellow, it was taken very early in the morning, nudges into the street and sort of doesn't seem to stop anywhere. He was he perhaps mistaking us for Huatoki like so many trucks and cars. I don't think so, because in the dim morning light, I could see his left indicator on, so he was going towards the city. One day, cresting the hill by the Vogel, I had to brake for a waste management truck that came out of Mill Road without pausing. I followed it to prove that it was doing over 60 before swerving left into Horry Street, stopping at a single house on the flat there. Councillors, garbage trucks are meant to go slowly, serving each house, not careering round town from household there to household here. The duplication, the revisiting areas a second and third time, the carbon footprint must exceed whatever is saved by the recycling. Four or five trucks in an 80 metre cul-de-sac is too darn many. Be costing ratepayers a bomb. Now I know the rubbish collection systems of London, Paris, San Francisco and Copenhagen. I know of no model which mixes civic and private enterprise, each retracing the roots of the other. If you're wedded to the idea of splitting <coughs> the contract with waste management, give them bell block or something so they drive real slow from household to household. Councillors, I appeal to you to rationalise this balmy state of affairs <coughs> and moderate contractors driving speeds before I have to sit here again following an accident, perhaps involving a cyclist or a child. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Calder. Does anyone have any questions of Mr Calder's deputation? There appears to be... Oh, Councillor Dinehaven. Yes, sir. Um, I'm assuming that you're aware that people contract provide other services than the council provides. I am. What other town does this, Mr Dinehaven? I'm not aware of what other towns do, um, but waste management like green bins and uh, silver bins and other colour bins, no doubt, um, contract privately with people to pick up their garden waste or whatever other thing it is. So. Do you think we should not allow that? No, I just think it needs rationalising. If waste management is visiting a street three times, surely their bill to the council is going to be correspondingly higher. And we, saving rates... Just no, a correction there, Mr Calder, um, waste management is not contract to the council at all. There is no cost to the ratepayer for waste management trucks. It's right. purely a private enterprise. Then my submission, Mr Chairman, is that uh, allowing people who pay rates to subtract that part of their rates and give it to a private contractor speeding round town is an unwise use of resources. That's really and blimming dangerous. Are there any further questions of Mr Calder? There appears to be none. Thank you for your deputation. Thank you, sir. For <coughs> Thank you, Council. Councillors, before we move into the meeting proper, uh, item A3 um, on your agenda has been removed. Um, there is new information has come to light that will affect the outcome of the application. So until more information um, is gathered, um, A3 has been pulled from the agenda. <coughs> so we'll move into committee minutes, the recommendations of the monitoring committee meeting 14th of June. I'll move. So I'd like to Councillor Pearce, someone like to second that? I can second. Councillor Besick. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 It is carried. <coughs> Moving into item A1, which is the uh, CCS Disability Action Street Audit, which is appendix to your uh, agenda. Are there any questions of, who have we got here, Liz here? Mr Langford, thank you very much. <coughs> Councillor Allen. I notice in the back of this excellent report uh, there's some action items and some of them are 
listed the, the um, a serious safety risks, and they've put, he's put a price of 37k on it. Um, are we going to action those, or uh, from the normal maintenance budget, or not? Through you, Chair, all of the recommendations that are contained in the report will be considered. Those that we feel have merit will be. Um, incorporated into the list of minor improvement and safety improvement projects. They'll then go through our own prioritisation process and take them forward from that. Thanks. Further questions of Mr Langford, what is up there? Councillor Hanley. Um, thank you, uh, Mr Chairman. Um, the suggestion from the deputation was that uh, there might be some sense in rotating this around the city. Have you any such thoughts? Um, through you, Chair, certainly we'd welcome any kind of input that would um, give us an insight into um, these kind of groups and their specialist needs. Um, so, yes, would be something we'd encourage. You have a supplementary, Councillor Allen? Yes, uh, th this report, as I understand it, was given to us free, in effect. Um, do you believe that the CCS should be doing similar studies around town? Um, through you, Chow, I'm not sure that's a question I can <laughs> I can answer. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Langford. Um, someone prepared to move item A1. So moved. Councillor Ellen, Councillor Dinehoven is now open for debate discussion. Councillor Besick. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I find this one quite an interesting um, report. It's a gift to this community or this council, but it actually needs funding for it to be anything. And we heard from the public forum tonight that his concern was that it just doesn't get filed away and ticked tonight and forgotten about. And when you read the report, it's basically saying, in a nutshell, that's what could easily happen because there's no budget being put to this. Um, and even when you read in the report on six, um, on page 11, 6.1, it says budget, um, and it talks about the budgeting um, implication. The, the budget could literally be none, because it talked about, I can't remember the exact wording, but it was that um, what the, the council can afford. And some would say the council can't afford to go around and spend 37K here and, and all the other extras on um, making Fitzroy a more um, uh, disabled friendly place, which in my view it is, but then what would I know? Um, the issue that I have is if we start going around all these little areas, the costs to this, to this community will go up and we've actually still got communities in, in our district that still don't have footpaths and curb and channeling. So I think the budget would be better spent elsewhere. So um, I will not be voting for this. This is a gift that costs the community. I don't see it as a gift, especially when we have no intent of actually putting any um, budget to it. Councillor Pearce. Mm, thank you. No, I don't agree with Councillor Dinehoven. Um, oh, sorry. It's one Councillor Beesick. <laughs> Um, point of order, that's like a couple it. of times I've been uh, mistaken for Councillor Dinehoven on getting concerned. You must be growing some hair again. <laughs> There's always a first, Councillor Beesick. Um, I don't agree with um, this uh, statement. This is a fantastic reference document. A lot of this work will be done um, with um, our maintenance budget, right. and we should be acknowledging these people. A few years ago, um, this council um, donned on um, earphones and blindfolds, and we hopped in wheelchairs and went round our CBD, and it was one of the scariest days I've had for a long time. I wouldn't like to have to navigate our streets and our CBD area um, with a disability. I think this is a fantastic document, and I applaud um, the CCS for actually uh, gifting it to the council and I'm sure our roading department as some of these come up for renewal they will be repaired in the manner that will be easy for the dis disabled people to manage. So sorry Councillor Besick, I don't agree with your statement. I think I've just found a way of funding it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> 50 bucks. <laughs> Councillor Dinehoven. Thank you um, Mr Chairman. Well um, I disagree with Councillor Besick as well, and all of the points made by Councillor Pierce were appropriate. I think there are a couple of statistics contained in the report that are quite useful, and one is the average age in Fitzroy is 42.6 years, 
and the uh, fact that 19.2 per cent of the population are, ab are above 65 years of age when the average for New Zealand is 14.3 per cent. So therefore I think this is a very useful report in that it points out some things we should look at for the future and some changes that might be made when normal maintenance activities etc <coughs> upgrading renewals are done there is the opportunity to look at this report and say what's the most appropriate in that space whatever that particular um, maintenance operation or renewal is what is a way of making it more user friendly for older and disabled folk and we should be doing that it, uh, it seems to me to be a no-brainer to actually take these points on board and look at the rest of the community as well and learn from this excellent report. I sat through the uh, Accessibility Issues Working Party, I think Councillor Rowlam and various others did, and uh, Councillor Chong chairs it. And we had a very good session with the writer of the report, uh, Mr Taylor, not the previous Mr Taylor from the Council, but a different Mr Steve Taylor, uh, who was very thorough in his analysis and his work, and I think it's an excellent report and we should take note of it. <coughs> Councillor Chong. Yes, thank you. I think this report is one of the best I've seen since uh, in, in this term. Um, there's a lot of ideas there, they're little ideas, and this report is for um, future development. And, and as, um, as our staff said, that um, it will be put forward and considered in, in any future development or changes to the roading. Um, so it's something you can always go back to. Also, um, time and time again that it's mentioned it's for the elderly and the dis disabled. It's for the accessibility. Now, we've got to remember with battery powers coming on, there's going to be a heck of a lot more scooters around. You know, they all need accessibility rather than disabled. Aldi just bought out a vehicle with a scooter embedded in the boot, in, in, in the, um, the back bumper. So when you park, you pull it out and then you can scooter from place to place. That's all part of this report. Not That's not in the report, but this report helps in the accessibility and, um, and smoothing out of roads for wheeled access rather than just walking. So uh, I think this here can be an example of what we can look at going forward in the future of reports. Thank you. Councillor Adam. Yeah, I, I also disagree with Councillor Bezek. Um, to, to me, sorry, I was being corrected. Uh, most of these are, are sort of straightforward little items which will benefit everybody. It's not just uh, disabled people. I mean, it's, it's things like cutting back the greenery in, mm. on the footpaths, and they're just ordinary, simple, straightforward, common things. So I, I f fully support it. I think it's excellent. Yeah. Councillors, we've had four councillors in support and one against. Is there anyone against the recommendation? That being the case, I'm now going to put it. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against. That is carried. Moving on to item A2, Councillor Jordan has declared an interest in this, the update on the Urunui Seawall extension. Um, are there any questions of Council? I do have one. We have several questions. Do we have uh, Mr Barron? Thank you, Andrew. Councillor Allen followed by Councillor Dienhoven. Yeah, can you explain right. please the uh, increasing costs? I mean the, the original <coughs> cost of this project was about 150,000. It, uh, it, it's now got up to 230,000 which is a huge increase and I think the same thing happened uh, with the Onaro seawall. Why this, the, the high increase? Uh, for you, the Chair. Uh, the original budget estimate was, uh, as far as I can ascertain, was undertaken in about 2012. Um, and what we've done now, we've done the detailed design, is we know what the design is, and we've applied the Aniro rates to that estimate to come up with a new estimate. Right, thank you. Council Dynhaven. Thank you. In uh, um, Mr. Barron, in recommendation B, uh, the planning team have advised that furthermore robust emergency interim protection measures are not available under the RMA and when I read the text does that mean that we are limited just to sand push-ups? Um, for you Chair, yes that's correct. And may I have a second? Mr. Supplementary. Uh, no, a different one. Different one? A different one. The, in regard to the resource consent uh, process we have a consent for the existing wall and I presume that because that wall was never 
completed to the original design, we could continue with that to the original design? Uh, for you, the Chair, um, if the funding was available, then, then yes. So why then do we need a new consent? Uh, for you, the Chair, because the uh, funding only um, enabled a half-tide wall, which required a new, a new consent. Is that arguable with the Regional Council? Uh, for you, the Chair, it's uh, the consenting area is not an area of my expe expertise. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Beasley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Two questions. The sand push-ups, how much are they costing us a time? Uh, for you, the Chair, uh, one and a half thousand. One and a half. And supplementary, do you know how long the last push-up actually lasted? Uh, for you, the Chair, as far as I believe, a, a matter of weeks. Uh, we haven't done any more push-ups since. Thank you. Councillor John. No, sorry. Oh, sorry, Councillor Johnston. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, in the report here, it uh, talks about the grassed area as not being in, <laughs> at immediate risk. Um, what's your comment on that? Uh, for you, for Chair, I think the intent was to say that the, the road wasn't at, at risk. Supplementary, Mr. Chairman, it's the grassed area between the road and the beach. It's a very important area where it says that it's not at immediate risk, and it is. Uh, we won't get into debate, Councillor Johnston. Councillor Handley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, it seems sensible not to do half a job, um, and it's quite clear on the diagram what the full job that was anticipated was going to be, but additional funding needs to be made available. What might the sources of that funding be? Uh, for you, the Chair, um, I suppose that's not really my area. I suppose it's a community funding or additional council funding. Probably a little bit of clarification for you, Mr. Uh, Councillor Handley, that this was a project that was included in the LTP, was rejected by this council and, uh, and, and in favour of a half tide wall. So, uh, the funding was not there for a full wall, simple as that, and the half-tide wall was included in the LTP, which is what was presented to us today. Mm. So That's if we need good. to do a full-tide wall, it would need to go back to an LTP, I presume? No, I meant, um, if I may, Mr Chairman, when I said the job to be fully done, I meant the length of it rather than the height of it. I think from uh, past experience in this report that the um, wall would be extended as far as the funding allows. Until it runs out. But, Mr Chairman, that was my point, that <laughs> it was expected to be longer than this, significantly longer, but for lack of funds it's not going to be completed. No. So the point that's been made is additional funds will need to be found if indeed we're going to finish the job. That will probably be a decision around the main table. Mm. Yeah. Not for council officers to decide. It will oh. be a council decision. Oh, indeed. Oh, yes. a supplementary question. Um, I'll have Councillor Dunsky first. Yeah. Councillor. Uh, just confirmation of the community's $50,000. Do we have that confirmation? Uh, for you, Chair, this was raised at the uh, Clifton Community Board the week before last. Um, they weren't forthcoming at that point in time, but they did undertake to get back to us, which they haven't done at this stage. And I can confirm that I received an email today from the Uranui Liaison Committee. I don't know why it came to me, but the $50,000 is available from the... Liaison Committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yep. Councillor Dinehaven. That was my question. <coughs> uh, One more, Mr. Here. Chairman. Councillor Chong. Yeah, how many how many actually residential dwellings are in there? Is there None. Any idea? None. No, I mean in in in, in this uh, <coughs> this new, your new area. I mean, I can count about twenty five or twenty six. Batches. Batches. Not residential dwellings. Batches. Batches of buildings. Yeah. Oh, a hundred and something. Hundred and thirty, isn't it? One hundred. Yeah. yeah. One hundred and twenty nine. Something. Take your pick anywhere between 1 and 150. No, <laughs> no further questions of Mr. Barron. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah. Well, item A2, would someone prepare to move the uh, report? <coughs> Councillor Pearce. I'll second from the Chair. It is now open for debate discussion. Councillor Allen. Yeah, uh, uh, we, uh, this is uh, these are only temporary measures we're taking. We know that the sea levels are rising. We know we're getting more storms and what have you. 
uh, how much longer are we going to continue throwing rocks into the sea, canute like I mean, I, know, I think this has to be done, but how much longer are we going to be doing it? <laughs> so ba basically, I agree with this, but I, I'm not. Um, we, we need to come to some conclusion where we don't keep continually trying to fight the, fight the sea. This is only a temporary measure. I have Councillor Johnson, followed by Councillor Pearce, followed by Councillor Chong. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I don't agree with the Councillor Allen. We have to protect an asset that we've had there for years. It's, this has been going on for a long, long time and it's about time we did something about it. If you have a look at the damage that was done over the weekend, your <laughs> eyeballs will fall out. There's a chair that was sitting there on the top of the uh, grass verge that people could sit on and look out over the beach. It's now not there anymore. There's a Pahutakawa tree that was, is gone. So you should get out and have a look at it. But I ask again why that grass area is not um, an immediate risk. It is at immediate risk. It is a very important grass area there that people play on, sit on, picnic on and have a lot of fun on. And that is an important recreational area that we must protect. And I know that it's gone through the LTP. but. That wall needs to go right through on, on your diagrams there to right through where the red piece is. If you have a look at it, that's where that wall needs to go and it needs to go there immediately. We should be getting into it right now. If you look at um, program and the pro um, page two in the program there, the consent process and everything is a fast. We should have been had that done completely with TRC and we should be underway with it. It's been going on for the last three or four or five years, I think it is, trying to get that resource consent all properly done. And we're still waiting for it. They have to go back to it again, they tell us now. <coughs> so it's about time we did something about it. And we should be getting right stuck into it at the next council meeting, putting it through so that they can get underway with it. Those sand push-ups are a waste of time. Go out and have a look what it's doing. They push the sand up, the sea comes in and takes it all out again. And if you look at the golf end, part of the, um, the complex down there where that sea wall, the rock wall was put there years ago. They said that the sand would disappear when that happened. Well, it hasn't. The sand is there and that rock wall has protected that golf club. So let's get on with it. It's about time we did something about it. Thank you. Councillor Pearce. Oh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I agree that the, um, uh, the sand push-ups uh, probably not the best option going forward, that the rock wall would have been pre preferred by the <coughs> local community. And I'm sure that the um, Uranu Beach community will be back here again um, right. in the years to come, because for as long as I've been a councillor, we've been discussing the sea wall. But we have an obligation to um, protect these batches. There are over 100 there, and um, they're asking us for this protection. And um, if the push-up, the sand push-up is just an interim, well, so be it. I would like to see them come back again and we can talk in the future about getting the rock wall back into the LTP. But I will support this going forward. Councillor Chong. Yes, I, I won't support this going forward. Um, we can't hold back the sea. With the sea rising, and yes, I went out there in the weekend too and I took video footage of of all the northern coastal beach areas there. And um, yeah, Councillor Col uh, Colin Johnson is, is correct. It's terrible. We can't, what, no matter what we do, we can't hold that back. You know, we, we, we're gonna have a king tide and a storm surge. It was a large tide, it wasn't a king tide. It's not when we're gonna, it's not if we're gonna have that, it's when we're gonna have that. And $50,000 for the batches out there. I was told, um, you know, Councillor Pierce said 100 batches, um, and then I heard from someone else 150 batches out there. Well, if you if you also add the um, if you also add the the campsites, so let's just say it is 150. It's only $300, $333 per batch they're given. Now I think they can give a little bit more because if we if, if that wall's there, the batch is not going to be worth anything. And when do we when do we set the precedent? Because if we carry on doing this, we're going to have to be doing this for the next 20, 20, 30 years all over the coast. And that will cost our ratepayers millions. Councillor Basic. Thank you, Mr Chair. Yeah, I do support, support this um, recommendation, even 
even though it would be nice to actually complete this rock wall, even though at the half half size, um, once and for all, the I think we've all been out there. I've been out there recently, and not long after after one of the push-ups that actually lasted days, um, and the Pahuta Kawa tree that Councillor Johnson talked about was laying on the beach the day I was there. Um, the problem we have, I think, we look at that this is an LTP project. It is in there. We need to get it done. I just hope, and looking at the tender process, we might be surprised when the tender process comes in that the cost may not be as high as um, council officers have um, indicated here and won't need the contingency and so forth, and we can at least get that rock wall um, even 90% along. We can talk all day about C. Um, rises and all that sort of thing and and that we're never going to stop no we're not going to stop it but for as long as I've been on council that um, the urinary seawall was built the first half that um, the full wall and that hasn't had any adverse effect on the golf course the golf course is still there um, months or weeks before the wall was was built the golf course was in um, immediate danger of actually becoming not a golf course um, because of the way the tides was. But the actual science around rock walls is actually quite an interesting one, and it does work. you just got to look along the, our coastlines. We're not saying that we're going to build a rock wall from um, Stony River all the way up to Mokau. What we're saying is we're just protecting um, the batches, starting a job that started how many years ago? Um, eight or nine years ago, and actually completing It's probably longer than that. Um, that job was started, yeah. So, but I mean, let's finish it. Let's just keep our fingers crossed that the tender process actually brings us a surprise. And part of the thing that we're actually discussing tonight becomes obsolete and the whole length is built. And those residents out there can rest assured that June next year, they won't have to traipse in and come and sit at their deputation table and talk to the council all the time about getting a rock wall finished. Thank you, Councillor Beasick. Councillor Handley. Thank you, Mr Chairman. <coughs> now, the policy of council was actually, actually to protect significant public land, and I think this probably meets that definition. I think we all need to agree that it does. And uh, picking up on Councillor Johnson and Councillor Besick, there's a need for us to go beyond this blue line and into the red, perhaps at a um, small marginal cost to the current budget, and I just think we should um, uh, we should get on with the job and do what we and, and finish this job, um, protect this significant public land, um, and I think that's our obligation, and we should simply get it done. Councillor Donhaven, I agree with uh, Councillor Handley and many of the other <coughs> things that have been said. Just point out that about one third of uh, the country of the Netherlands is below sea level. Uh, and it's been protected by a variety of rock walls of different sorts, so it is possible. Um, the, uh, the current consent, as I understand it, goes to the end of the red line on the wall. Therefore, there's nothing to stop us, other than the budget, yep. from proceeding with that construction to at least uh, protect at a low wall level, um, which should give us a majority of the protection needed for not only the batches there, but also for the space of the <coughs> recreation area. I'm very pleased to see that uh, Ngāti Mutunga and uh, all of the other consent parties have agreed that we should go ahead, and I think we should just get on with it, as Councillor Handley said. Well done, That's, yeah. not the That's not the recommendation, but um, this, this urinary seawall project, I've been involved with for the last 15 years, um, probably 12 years while I've been involved with the Council, and we are today at a situation that's been arrived by governance decisions. At the last LTP, um, when a, a, an application to finish the entire stone wall was made for $450,000, was turned down. So uh, we had an half, a half complete seawall out there. The last LTP, we come in with an, uh, an application to do the half tide wall and that narrowly got through by seven to eight, uh, eight to seven votes. So that was to do the half tide wall. Now we're all sitting around here saying we should do the full wall, <laughs> which seems rather ironic. Mm, exactly. So um, 
said. We have before us a recommendation I'm sorry, today. I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Chairman. That's not what we're saying. We're just saying we should complete the work that's outlined in this, um, the which is the red and, and the blue. We're not I'm commenting on the recommendation that's before us today, which was agreed to during the LTP. For the figures there, with the $50,000 of community contribution. That's right. Mm -hmm. Correct. There are some mitigating features there. We call it significant land. It's not ours. It's Ngāti Mutanga's. Mm. And we have a situation in Waitra on the Rahuri block, mm. which is quickly eroding houses. Mm. And we're hesitant to do anything about that because it's not our land. <laughs> so, Councillor Chong, you're absolutely right. Mm. Um, how far along our coast do we go? This is a project this council started 15 years ago, originally in partnership with TET, then we went alone, and we've got a half wall. It is slipping into the ocean. This is the recommendation that we agreed to at the LTP. You either accept it or you reject it tonight. There is no compromise. It's on the table. So that's what's before you tonight. Whether you want to extend it along as far as you can, that's a decision this council will need to address. But the recommendation is, as it sits here today, um, the $50,000 of community funding has been confirmed available. So that's the reality of it is. So any more, I'm going to now put that resolution. All those in favour of item A2, please say aye. 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 Against? No. It is carried. Would you like the work recorded? Yes, please. Councillors, A3 is off the uh, agenda now, so we move into A4, which is the delegated authority contracts. And we have before us the street lighting, maintenance and installation. Are there any questions of council officer? There appears to be none. Someone prepared to move? Happy to move. Seconded. That was Harry? Yeah. It's now open for debate, discussion. There appears to be none. I'm now going to put that always in favour. Please say aye. 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 Against? It is carried. Moving on to item A5. The Bell Block Community Pool Society incorporated the new lease. Are there any questions of clarification? There appears to be none. Is someone prepared to move? Yeah. Councillor Allen. Seconders. Councillor Pierre seconds. Is there any debate? Discussion? I, I would just like to say that this is a really, really good community project and we should support it in every way we can. Thank you. No further. Comments? I'm now going to put that all those in favour. Please say aye. 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 Against it is carried. Moving into item A6, which is the Local Government Act 2002 Amendment Bill Number 2. Quite a lengthy, in depth mm. report. Mm. Are there any questions of clarification that we need to ask? There appears to be none. Is someone prepared Happy to, to move? move? Councillor Besick. Councillor Pearce. It is now open for debate discussion. Councillor Jordan. Thank you, Mr Chairman. We should be very, very wary about CCOs in the form that the Local Government Commission may sometime in the future, if possible, if it would be in their powers, if the way it is envisaged, be able to impose on us uh, why we all look around our councils in our area and we think there should be quite considerable synergies between us, and there is, uh, to do them of our own accord is one thing, to have them imposed on us is another completely different matter. Uh, because if they're imposed on us, uh, and it's the CCO, the transparency, the accountability uh, would be all but gone from your local ratepayer. Uh, there would also be some, uh, if you were a smaller council, there would be considerable effect would be had on your ability to continue to exist. Mm -hmm. So we are weary. I think the local government, New Zealand, are also very weary uh, <coughs> that <coughs> it would be amalgamation by stealth. Uh, so I think uh, in our submission would it, it says uh, something similar to that. So, but I believe that you should be <coughs> do all in your power uh, to convince those that need convincing that this is possibly not the way to go. There are some good things in it, but there are certainly some things that you should be aware of and wary of. Councillor Donovan. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I agree with my colleague to my right. The uh, 
page eight. <laughs> Not usually to the left of me. Uh, page eight of our report outlines, I think, very clearly what the issues are. But the issue raised by Councillor Jordan is one that the general public, I'm sure, will be uh, very well attuned with once they understand it. And those that have <coughs> taken the trouble to look at what's proposed will be aware, as I rightly predicted three years ago, that the way forward for government, if it wanted to ensure amalgamations, was to actually take tasks off local mm. government and put them in the form of some sort of corporation, or in this case, as they've decided, CCOs, council controlled organisations, except that the first word, council, won't be much in control of those organisations. Because those organisations, if they are formed to take over roading regionally or bigger, maybe, maybe the Taranaki uh, Manawatu Waikato Roading Authority, for example, uh, may not be controlled by councils. It may be controlled by a board of directors, for example, appointed by the Minister of the Day, perhaps, to do with roading. Now, that is not very clear in what's before us, as the legislation doesn't spell out yet how that will work. So if you took water and roading, off some councils, and I think the Stratford District Council, for example, that comprises approximately, I was going to say 60 or 70 percent, but probably around 75 or more percent of their activity. So if you took roading and water out of their activity, wouldn't the ratepayers say, well, why bother having a council? And I think that that way uh, it would be one way that the government would hasten amalgamation and those communities would not have representation at a local level with their own council. Mm. Bigger is not always better and as we've seen mm. it Reports can create out. quite some inefficiencies. So I agree with Councillor Jordan we should be wary of this and our point should be made by uh, ourselves in Wellington, in my view, at the Select Committee and not simply leave it to local government New Zealand to put a submission forward on our behalf. I'm pleased that we've decided to go ahead with the submission pointing out our concerns. As Councillor Jordan said, there are some <coughs> positives, but that to me is the big negative in this legislation. Thank That's you, well Mr well. Chairman. Yeah, there's a telling uh, sentence in, on page six which says, we are also concerned about the ability of the Minister of Local Government to set the performance measures and benchmarks for council services and CCOs. Local authorities are accountable to their electors, not to the Minister of Local Government or any other minister. And I think it tells the whole story. <laughs> Councillor Dunsking. Can I just say, Mr Chairman, that for me the important issue is that whatever is decided should be our decision. It should not be something yeah. that's foisted onto us. And I agree with Councillor Allen with his comments around that as well. Can we just say that at the local government conference, if you can take any comfort at all from the words that we heard from the minister were that he would not, I th no, beg your pardon, that he would resign if anybody was put into amalgamated situations without having public consultation. So there was some uh, movement, if you like, but he also agreed to meet with local government New Zealand and start uh, a conversation about some of our areas of concerns around the technicalities. So there is obviously some movement, but I agree, we need to be in Wellington putting our points of view, <coughs> not just sitting back here letting somebody out do it for us. The face-to-face -face has got to be so important in this issue. So thank you, Mr Chairman. Further debate discussion? There being none, I'm now going to put that always in favour. Please say aye. 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 Against it is carried. Moving into item A7, exclusion from the public for the remainder of the meeting. Um, we'll have a, a three minute break. Um, Mr Tennant and uh, Mr Busker uh, are going to uh, attend and do a deputation and uh, public excluded. I'm an early leaver. You're an early leaver? <laughs> oh, no, no, there's been a report. Um, there's been a